Howdy chemistry folks. What I have here for you today is basically a lesson on how to work with test tubes and test tube holders, test tube clamps. So this is a test tube holder. The way you set up a test tube holder is you squeeze, clamp it into place, and now you're holding the test tube. You'll notice that I have the test tube holder toward the top of the test tube. Not at the bottom of the test tube, not in the middle of the test tube, but at the top. Reason for that is because if you go to heat this, you want the metal as far away from the flame as possible. This is called a test tube rack. You'll notice that I have a plastic rack. The plastic racks are actually better than the metal ones because the plastic in general is going to be less chemically reactive than the metal is going to be. So if you have the opportunity to use a plastic test tube rack, I would go with it instead. This one over here is a test tube clamp. Test tube clamp is designed to clamp into position or stay in position on a ring stand. Uh, a later video will be used to describe how to use this properly. Uh, for right now, we're going to be spending more time talking about the test tube holder instead. So, as far as the test tube holder is concerned, what about heating up a test tube? Well, let's go ahead and get the Tyrell burner lit. All right, we have a good flame right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you the te proper technique of holding the test tube in the Bunsen burner flame. Now, or Tyrell burner flame. As far as this is concerned, how are you going to hold this? You don't want to hold it like this because if you freak out, you will squeeze and drop your test tube all over the place. What you wanna do is either pinch it from the back or even better yet, put one finger in this spot here and hold it in position like this. This will give you the opportunity to be able to turn and bend and move this around without too much difficulty. All right, so let's go ahead and do proper technique for heating up a test tube full of, that just happens to be water by the way, but it could be any liquid for that matter. You'll notice that I have it on the test tube holder and I'm going to grab it with my finger going through the section of the test tube holder and picking it up. Now, as far as angle, you'll notice that I'm going to hold this not straight up and down, but at a 45 degree angle. You wanna make sure the mouth of the test tube is not pointing at any other person or yourself. You do not wanna aim this at your face because if you screw up the heating, it will shoot out of the test tube and into somebody or onto you. Notice that as I'm heating this liquid, I'm moving it around the hottest point of the flame, which is the inner blue cone. So that tip of the inner blue cone is that hottest part and I'm moving it around that inner blue cone. All right, so let's go ahead and do some stupid things. Stupid thing, holding it into one position and you'll notice it's gonna start to shoot out of the test tube and splatter at people. Bad day for whoever gets hit by that, okay? But you'll notice that if you go to heat this, you'll be able to move it around pretty quickly. When this is boiling, I actually am able to feel the vibrations through this metal and I can feel it getting ready to boil. All right, now I'm gonna put this hot test tube into the metal test tube rack, or I could put it into the plastic one. I believe these plastic test tube racks are actually designed to handle the heat. Now let's go ahead and heat up a solid. Once again, same technique, clamp it onto the test tube, or actually hold it onto the test tube, and put your finger through the hole, and then heat it up. The metal that I have in there is zinc. That zinc is actually going to be able to melt in the, in the Tyrell burner flame. You'll notice once again, same technique. I'm moving it around, but I'm generally keeping it in the flame, just trying to keep the test tube relatively evenly heated. This will take a little bit longer than heating up the liquid. All right, starting to melt. Now with some of these, once they get heated up, you could actually probably hold it or move it a little bit slower in the flame. Some labs will even instruct you to leave it directly in the flame itself, kind of like this. But please make sure you follow the procedure that is given to you by your instructor or by the lab technique that is described. All right, so it is starting to melt. There we go. And it's almost completely melted.
All right, so now let's say you want to set this down, but this is going to be too hot for the test tube rack. As a matter of fact, I don't think, yep, it actually starts to smoke the test tube rack because it's going to melt it too much. You could either use a metal test tube rack, which will not be affected by that tremendous amount of heat, or what you could do is, if this were still solid, you could just lie this down on the countertop. Notice that when I lie this down on the countertop, that I leave the test tube holder on it, so that way the test tube itself doesn't roll away or fall off or fall off the table or roll anywhere. If you see a rolling test tube heading toward you, do not reach out to grab it. Bad things could happen, like the test tube could break, the chemical inside of it could be reactive to human tissue, uh, the glass could break and you're going to get it into your hands. Just let it fall. You can clean it up later. Get out of the way. But if you leave the test tube holder on it, you can just set it on the countertop and you should be just fine. That concludes the instructions of how to use a test tube holder and heat up a test tube. This, once again, is a test tube clamp, and this is a test tube rack. Have a good afternoon.